Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to SCL's Q2 FY24 earnings conference call. I'm Lakshmi Ayer, Head Investor Relations at Starlight Technologies. To take us through the results and to answer your questions, we have Ankit Agarwal, MD, SEL, and Tushar Shroff, Group CFO, SDL. Please note that all participant lines are in listen-only mode as of now. There will be an opportunity to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Please note that the call is being recorded. You can also download a copy of the presentation from our website at www.sel.tech. Before we proceed with this call, I would like to add that some elements of today's presentation may be forward-looking in nature and must be viewed in relation to the risk pertaining to the business. The safe, har uh, sorry, the safe harbor clause indicated in the presentation also applies to this conference call. For opening remarks, I now hand over the call to Ankit Agarwal. Thank over to you, Ankit. Thank you, Lakshmi. Uh, good day, everyone. Thank you for joining us for our Q2 FY24 earnings conference call. Just to reiterate, our strategic priorities remain the same and are as follows. Firstly, we continue to grow the optical business by increasing the optical fiber cable market share and connectivity attach rate. Initiatives to optimize raw materials and fixed costs in the business to become more competitive are ongoing. Secondly, we shall continue to consolidate our global services business in select segments. We are building new capabilities for value-added services and looking at improving the profitability. Lastly, but not the least, we shall build the digital business through focused investments in building technology and domain capability and looking at getting to be EBITDA break-even in the near term. We shall now cover the outlook and performance of our optical business. Coming to the demand outlook, as per CRU, the medium-term demand for optical fiber cable volumes is expected to go up to 623 million fiber kilometers by 2027, up from 535 million fiber kilometers in 2022. The short-term headwinds are mainly in the markets of North America and expected to continue with contraction in the U.S., uh, in North America for 7.7% and in China by 1.9% respectively in 2023. CRU has made a downward revision of the earlier forecast of North America for 2023 by 7%. The near-term downturn in North America is on account of an inventory correction which is expected to correct in Q1 or Q2 of 2024 calendar year Service providers are already in the process of participating in various government-funded opportunities, including the U.S. dollar $42.5 billion beat program. STL's focus markets of North America, Europe, and India are high potential and is estimated to grow at a CAGR between 2023 and 2028 of 10.1%, 4.7%, and 9.5% respectively. This is something we wanted to share with all of you in terms of how the networks are evolving and the new way of operators looking at carpet coverage of fiber. Telcos on a global scale are primed for substantial expansion of their 5G subscriber base. Moreover, we now see 60 technology starting to grade, to grate more and more noise in the market and it will be forefront by 2028. From being linear with limited applications, as you can see on the left-hand side, Fiber has now become denser and all pervasive. With the growing utilization of fiber in various applications like fiber to the home, AI data, AI based data centers, edge data centers, smart cities, small cells, and the integration of 5G into smart enterprises, demand is expected to increase multifold. Presently, about 5G penetration as 36% as per Omdia. And the 5G subscription is forecasted to go at 184% in, in North America, from 173 million to 601 million subscribers. In the case of fiber to the home, currently 67 million unique homes have been passed out of the 129 million homes. As per CRU, FTTH homes passed will increase in line with BEAD from 8.7 million per year to 12.25 million in 2025 with a CAGR of almost 18%. Also, the current data center expansion on CapEx between $50 billion to $60 billion and is forecasted to grow to $90 billion by 2027. 
Coming specifically to the BEAT program, as on date, the, pro the broadband map mapping has been completed and state-wise allocations for BEAT funding has been announced. The initial grant will release 20% of the funding with funds expected to flow into the respective states by, 20, by early 2024 and should kickstart the demand recovery in the market. The final grant will release the balance funding by early 2025 and will drive a continued demand phase beyond that. Since the deployment need to be completed within four years of the award, there will be an adequate runway of growth beyond 2025 as well. Our U.S. factory in North America is fully compliant with Build America, Buy America regulations. STL is well positioned to capture the growth impetus from this BEAT program. Coming to India, the 5G subscriptions are expected to grow at a CAGR of 48% from 100 million subscribers currently to 700 million subscribers by 2028. The telcos are expected to spend between $1.5 billion to $2.5 billion uh, of a 5G fiberization as per research reports. Similarly, the data center capex is also expected to grow significantly. Between 2023, where about $4 billion will be invested, it will grow to as high as between $16 to $20 billion by FY25. And just one example is Amazon Web Services is expected to invest $12.7 billion in data centers in India between now and 2030. As you may be aware, the India fiber, capita, fiber per capita stand is only 0.25 kilometers compared to China at 2.5 kilometers and US at 1.8 kilometers, indicating a massive potential ahead. The government has recently approved the 1.39 lakh crore for phase, net, uh, for phase 3 of Bharat Net, which is envisaged to upgradation of the fiber network that lay across the 2.5 lakh gram panchayats of India. Our market share remains stable at 11% in H1 of calendar year 2023 versus H1 of calendar year CY22. We remain, uh, we expect the OFC market share to grow from second half of FY24 onwards. A connectivity business attach rate has increased to 13% from 10% on a Q1Q -Q basis. <clears throat> Commercialization of the new optical connectivity products will further increase the attach rate from H2 FY24 onwards. Coming to the financials for the optical business, the H1 FY24 revenue stands at 2,196 crores, which is lower by 10% on year-on-year -year basis on the back of lower OFC volumes, but partially offset by improved realization. Although revenue has declined in H1, H1 FY24 EBITDA has gone up by 8% on year-on-year -on -year basis to Rs. 457 crores. EBITDA margins for H1 FY24 stands at 20.8%. Reducing reduction in operating costs have ensured increase in margins. Moving on to the performance of our global services business. Our project execution on the services business is on track. Among Indian public projects, our Bharatnet project in the state of Telangana is 66% complete, including all packages. The network modernization project is 71% complete. The managed services project is 31% com uh, complete. And additionally, we have just started the data center project. On the India private sector, the fiber rollout project for large Indian telecom operator is 30% complete for phase three. Fiber rollout for another large telecom operator of phase two is 42% complete. And fiber rollout for a modern optical network for another private customer is 70% complete. In the UK, fiber to the home rollout uh, in the UK for all projects combined is 31% complete. In the global services business, H1 FY24 revenue stands at Rs. 728 crores. We have been selective in order intake and execution. HY20, HY, H1 FY24 EBITDA has gone up by 81% year-on-year basis to 49 crores. Due to favorable project mix, EBITDA margin for H1 FY24 stands at 6.7%. We shall now talk about the performance of STL Digital. 
In HCL Digital, we are continuing on the growth momentum. We acquired new customers in the US and India across technology and services industry verticals. We have more than 20 plus active customers at the end of Q2 FY24. We also had a strong order deal inflow in Q2 FY24. Currently, we have 43 plus active technology partners and signed strategic partnership with SAP and Google to offer the solution jointly to our customers. Growth will be driven by a robust order book, over 780 crores, and the right uh, team of leadership and consultants. In line with our expectations, and despite a tough industry environment, we have grown revenues to, six, uh, to rup rupees 62 crores in H1 FY24, a 25% growth Q on Q basis. The EBITDA loss for H124 is at 54 crores. EBITDA losses are trending downwards on Q on Q basis and expected to further reduce with increase in revenue run rate. I now hand over to Tushar for further talking about the financials. Thank you, Ankit. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Now we talk about STL Q2. FY24 financial highlights. Q2 FY24 revenue stands at 1,494 crores. The 11% drop in revenue is on account of the reduction in a OFC volume, which was down on year on year basis, a partially offset, a partially offset by improved realization. Q2 FY24 EBITDA margin is, however, up at 14.4%. Margin increased by 50 bips on year on year basis due to improved operating improvement in operating efficiency. Q2 FY24 PAT is at rupees 28 crores is on account of higher depreciation of US factory and increase in interest cost led by <coughs> led by higher interest rates. Now we talk about STL H1 FY24 financial highlights. STL recorded H1 FY24 revenue at rupees 3016 crores. H1 FY24 EBITDA at rupees 451 crores, which has increased 31% on year on year basis, along with margin expansion of 230 bips. H1 FY24 patch stands at 74 crores. Now we talk about the revenue mix, which is now moving from US to other geographies. In terms of new orders in optical business, we continue to win multi-million dollar orders for optical fiber cable in Europe and Americas. In service business, we continue to win system integrator system integrator contract in a data center space and fiber rollout for 5G deployment in India. In light of lower demand from North America, revenue mix has shifted more towards EMEA and India in Q2 FY24 versus FY23, with this regions accounting for 72% of the revenue. Open order book highlights. Our open order book at the end of Q2 FY24 is rupees 10,516 crores. Our order book is well diversified across our customer segments and across all our businesses. The financials abridged version is uh, placed before you. Uh, the main highlight of the financial is with respect to the net debt of FY24 for a six month period has reduced by 111 crores from FY23. We expect to complete the demerger of global service business by Q1 FY25. The current demerger status, we have recently received the NOC from both the stock exchanges for the demerger of the scheme and we will be filing the application with NCLT shortly. In summary, I would like to state that in optical network business, we shall target to gain 
market share across our focus market, particularly in EMEA, India, APEC markets to fill the volume gap from U.S. markets. A ramp up of U.S. plan to capitalize on demand surge in North America going forward, that is in 24-25 onwards. Increase in optical connectivity to drive the growth and the attach rate. In global service business, we continue to focus on select, proje select projects to improve the profitability and optimize the net fund involvement. In digital business, we continue to grow revenue and achieve EBITDA break-even by Q4 2024. With operationalization of U.S. plant, a CAPEX cycle has completed. Our capital allocation priority will be towards a debt reduction. In terms of guidance, <clears throat> given additional quarters of inventory correction in North America to play out fully, we expect the revenue to decline in FY24. For FY24, significant focus will be towards reduction in a debt, net debt. Now we talk about the, our initiatives on ESG. Our ESG rating from Morgan Stanley Capital Investment has improved from triple B to A. Major updates for the quarter, STL has become the world's first optical fiber manufacturer to launch independently verified eco-level methodology. STL has collaborated with Hijinko for supply of green hydrogen for use in its manufacturing. Now I hand over to Lakshmi for closing remarks. Thank you, Tushar. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, with this, we come to the end of our presentation and shall now move on to the Q&A. Please note that if you want to ask a question, you can click on the raise hand and we shall take your questions one by one. Sorry, Goshal, please go ahead with your question. Yeah, thanks for uh, taking my question. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, if you can uh, help us understand that uh, how is the demand, demand situation evolving in North America and basically uh, when you say that inventory correction will continue for a few more months, how should we read that in terms of the base uh, revenue that you have done in say Q1 and Q2 uh, two from North America, whether whether the worst is over and things start improving from here on, or do you expect things can even worsen from here on? Yeah, thank you, Sunny. Uh, so I, I'd put it in in two three areas. One definitely, uh, probably since what we spoke last and and guided last, we still see more time required uh, in North America market to really get through that inventory. Uh, and for the demand and the right kind of demand coming back with full steam. Uh, so earlier, if you remember, we had probably guided that somewhere around uh, Q3 or Q4, we should start seeing that demand come back. Uh, we now see that it will probably be closer to, you know, Q1 of next year, uh, financial year, where we start seeing some of the uh, the regular or the good, good uh, volume of demand coming back uh, from North America. So that's one shift that we're seeing. Uh, from the market perspective, when we speak to our customers and also look at our peers in in the industry, um, from uh, from the operations perspective, uh, that also means what we have shared is we've also looked at other markets, including uh, EMEA as well as India, for for growing that and making sure that some of the some of the volume drop gets covered in in those markets. Uh, of course, our realizations are as we've shared in the past are higher typically in North America and then in Europe as well. Uh, so to that extent, we do expect a decline from a revenue perspective. So that's what we have just shared 
uh, in our last slide that uh, overall that will impact uh, the revenue at of the optical business and then overall for the STL for for the rest of the year. And uh, by recovery, do you mean that uh, uh, basically you will go back to what you were doing before, uh, say, like in Q3 or Q4 of FY23 in terms of the run rate from North America? That is what you mean by recovery or you mean that things improve from the current base? Because what is not clear from any of the commentary or the presentation is where is the new base uh, uh, looking like? Yeah, so I think that's fair. I think, uh, look, I, I would, I would uh, say that, uh, Sunny, there's still uncertainty, certainly over next six months, of how the demand pans out. So I would say we are still looking and continuing to converse with our customers on on how that demand comes through. So we'll probably be able to update you as as we see that. What I'm structurally saying is that we do see fundamentally as inventory comes down. Uh, the projects like Bead and other demand for that starts coming in, as well as the other projects start kicking in. We do fundamentally believe that the North America market will continue to start growing back in that time frame, as I shared, from Q1 uh, next fiscal year onwards. So that's when we see that the demand should be strong. And on the back of that, and especially now with our U.S. factory fully ready and fully compliant, we are very well positioned to capture that growth uh, as that comes back. But we don't see it as kind of a hockey stick. There will be quarter-on-quarter quarter quarter improvement. Sure, sure. And uh, uh, basically, if you can give some color on interconnect, because there is no uh, uh, outlook or any description on the interconnect business yep. in the current presentation. Uh, so basically, how is that progressing? And uh, what is the attach rate we are operating at currently? And... Uh, how do we see the outlook of that business in the near future and the medium term? Yeah, so uh, as we shared, Sunny, this is uh, continues to be a top priority uh, for growth for the optical business. Uh, we uh, the, the key areas for us have been uh, very, very focused in terms of uh, improving the attach rate compared to the cable that we do. Uh, what we had shared earlier also is that we have seen some success, uh, particularly in, in Europe. So we want to continue to scale up in that market, uh, but also exploring how we can scale up in other markets, including North America. Uh, the the reason we cannot give very specific forecasts is because of the fairly long uh, cycles that it takes to get the approvals and to get in uh, with some of these leading telecom operators. What I can share is that this is certainly a top priority for us. We currently have improved from 10% to 13%, uh, which is in Q2. Uh, and as we've shared earlier as well, the intent is to continue to, to improve that uh, going forward. Um, and uh, certainly we'll continue to give, uh, uh, you know, give more visibility, uh, particularly as we start improving our positioning in Europe and U.S. Sure, Sunny, sure. Sunny, Sunny, you can refer the slide 12 where we have given a little color on uh, OI attach rate in terms of how we are seeing, uh, you know, in the quarter, uh, the, it has gone up to 13%. Uh, so I think, you know, uh, we have provided some information about OI uh, on slide number 12. Sure, thank you. And if I may, I have one last question. Uh, basically, on the global service business, uh, uh, what is the uh, status of your uh, T fiber project? Uh, because the uh, completion rates look to remain remain stagnant there. Uh, so uh, is is that project uh, moving very slowly? How should we look at the completion of that? Because uh, I believe that uh, the uh, large amount of capital employed uh, 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 stuck in the service business through some of these government projects. So what is the outlook there? Uh, in any color will be helpful. Sure. sure. No, absolutely. Sorry. So I, uh, so you're right that that is an important project for us. Uh, we uh, So just to be clear, we continue to make uh, progress in that project. Uh, there would have probably been uh, slower execution on the account of, you know, factors like uh, monsoon and other things. Uh, but uh, what's important to also remember is that uh, the way these projects are structured, especially from a cash out perspective, are on achieving certain milestones. Um, and so it's it's one of those elements where even if smaller amounts so from a kilometer perspective are achieved, but as you keep completing those links and uh, milestones, 
then the cash payouts happen. So fundamentally, we believe that that's the focus for us. We want to continue to move and you will see progress in this project broadly over the next six months. And there we see as we start hitting the milestone, there will be disproportionate cash out uh, from these projects. But, but structurally, uh, the, the, there's a good understanding between us, uh, T-Fiber, and uh, as we complete these milestones, we have good confidence on the cash getting released. Oh, okay. Thanks. Thanks for the detailed answers. Thank you, Sunny. Thank you, Sunny. Oh, we'll now move on to Bala. Bala, can, just for the benefit of the others, can you also state your organization name and take your questions? Thank you so much, sir. I'm Bala from Adikan Capital. Uh, sir, I have one question regarding in the realization side. You have mentioned improvement on the realizations. One of your competitor talked about uh, like a decrease in, in that OF and OFC side. On the OFC side, they have mentioned 1,200 rupees per fiber kilometer to 1,300 to 1,200 rupees per fiber kilometer price corrections. On that OF side, uh, 380 rupees uh, to 350, 345 in that range per fiber kilometer price corrections, but we have mentioned about uh, improvement on the realizations. How do we understand in this quarter? Yeah, thank, thank you, Ayan. So, uh, um, firstly, I mean, I, we, we don't normally comment on, on our competitors. What we can share at least is that uh, we've uh, strategically always looked at our, our focus markets uh, being uh, Europe, North America, and India, which, which largely contribute to over 90% of our sales. Uh, these are markets where we've been very focused on selling our innovations, selling our products, and as you can also some element of the interconnect that, that comes through. Specifically on, on fiber and cable, I, I won't be able to comment on specific realizations, but uh, we have been able to push uh, some of the price increases uh, to our customers uh, successfully, and that is what has come through in our realizations improving uh, from uh, last quarter to this quarter. Okay, sir. Sir, on the debt side, like how much we are focused in, focused to reduce in this financial year? So, Bala, uh, 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 we, our internal target is to see that uh, anything in terms of 200 to 250 crores in terms of a debt reduction that uh, we are internally targeting. Oh, okay, sir. Uh, sir, like... Uh, on that volume side, like you have mentioned, some volume drop. Uh, is there like a, this volume drop is specifically uh, like is in domestic market or in or in the international markets? This Basically. is largely yeah. This is largely international market. Uh, in fact, uh, since we saw some of the the slowdown in North America, we've in fact increased our sales successfully in the Indian market as well. Okay, sir. Okay, got that. Okay, thank you, sir. I'll come back in. Thank you. Have uh, Nikhil uh, Chaudhary, uh, please go ahead. Hey, hi, Ankit. Hi, Tushar. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, first question uh, is regarding uh, the revenue growth guidance. So, uh, Ankit, on uh, one hand, the CRU is guiding uh, less than 1% decline in overall volume ex China in 23. Our own guidance states that uh, our revenue growth will be uh, uh, negative, let's say, right? Uh, uh, is it fair to assume that uh, we might be losing market share uh, in some geography given our overall revenue growth is negative while, you know, overall market is more or less flattish? Yeah, um, so I would say, I would put two, three passwords. One, categorically, I want to share that uh, we are not losing market share. In fact, a big focus for us is, uh, how do we, in fact, increase our market share in, in this market scenario? Um, as I also shared, we're very, very well positioned now uh, in North America with uh, absolute, you know, tier one customers, tier two customers we have on board uh, with the facility that we have now set up, uh, as well as now getting uh, Bab Baba Beat compliant. Uh, we are, in fact, very strategically well positioned to uh, capture good market share as the market uh, comes back. So that's one on, on the U.S. In Europe also, with our facility of Metallurgica and our Optotech acquisitions, uh, we are in a good position, strong market position uh, to capture the Europe market. And India as well, as I just shared, we are in fact increasing our share in the Indian market uh, with customers like Airtel and some others. 
So uh, overall, we are quite well positioned. I wouldn't comment on the numbers between how we are growing versus CRU because CRU is also an external, uh, you know, market forecast. Uh, what we are very clear is that these are the three uh, current markets that we are uh, operating in. Uh, within this period, we are seeing how to maximize our market share on one side with our customers. We're looking to increase our interconnect business that we spoke of. And what uh, Tushar just touched on is from our operational perspective, really looking at uh, cost efficiency to ultimately improve our profitability. Uh, sure, Ankit. Uh, second is, again, on uh, operating efficiency only, what you mentioned. Uh, clearly, we have seen uh, quite a bit of improvement despite of uh, challenging quarter and margin uh, uh, facing challenge due to lower America's revenue. Uh, but uh, just want to understand uh, where we are in the journey how much uh, we have already traveled and also regarding, you know, we hired external external consultancy to guide us in terms of cutting our uh, oral cost. So any maybe a directional guidance you can give where we are, how far we have reached and any color on that will be appreciated. Yeah, so I think uh, timing wise, we're probably, you know, halfway or three fourth into that journey. So we still have a few months where some of the impacts of these initiatives should continue to come through. Um, I think what's important to understand is the way we've gone about it is that to make sure that structurally we're in a better cost efficiency base so that whenever as the market uh, improves and other operations improve, we're able to hold on and, and uh, you know, get the benefit of these costs in the years to come. So that's how we've gone about it. These are structural uh, focus that we've had, structural initiatives we've had uh, looking at every element of our cost, uh, you know, and, and making sure that we see the benefit of that. So, so that's that's broadly where we are. Uh, we continue to believe that there are opportunities for further cost uh, improvements, um, and we're focused on that. Sure. Okay. Uh, that's it from my side. Uh, thank you. Good luck for coming period. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Nikhil. We'll now move on to Sohan Joshi. Sohan, please state your organization name as well. Hi, Angit. Am I audible? I am from ASC Consultants. I uh, want to ask one question. Uh, what is the time frame now within which we can achieve the net debt to EBITDA to 2.5 or below 2.5? I mean, want to understand sure. up to what time frame we'll achieve that. Are we now factoring the right issues as well in achieving this 2.5 uh, to 2.5 or below 2.5 net debt to EBITDA level? Sure. So uh, I think as, as, as Tushar just mentioned, I think... Uh, Definitely one data point is we have reduced our net debt by about 110 odd crores uh, in the first half. And overall, uh, we're looking at somewhere between 200 to 250 crores net debt reduction uh, for the year. So that's a, a clear priority in line with what we have guided in the past of generating cash on the business and, and reducing the uh, net debt. We have also looked at our, our CapEx uh, for the full year and broadly looking to reduce our capex from around 350 400 probably closer to 250 crores uh, for the year so these are two three areas where we're looking at it very closely from a cash and and second part also from a, a fund involvement looking at how we can reduce that further particularly in the services business so these are some of the areas uh, that we are very focused on uh, the last part is also on our uh, digital business where to, this year we would have spent about overall uh, we'll be spending close to 120 crores uh, as an investment into this business. As that also gets into EBITDA break-even by Q4, then that uh, that co cost and cash also uh, comes away. So these are the areas that we're focused. Uh, I won't be able to comment specifically uh, on the net debt EBITDA at this moment, particularly given how we are looking at the, uh, the next six months. So we're just watching this very, very closely in terms of the market dynamics. And as as we get better visibility, we'll be able to share with you. Okay, thanks a lot. My second question is that given the bleak outlook on the demand side, will we push back our right issues proposal? Any guidelines on that? So we've we've got the approval uh, uh, in terms of the rights issue and overall fundraise. Uh, we have got approval up to thousand crores. So depending on uh, on our strategic requirements as well as market conditions, etc., we'll continue to evaluate. I won't be able to comment on it specifically at this time. Okay, one last question. What is the current order book status from the BharatNet project? I mean, uh, what is the value addition we are now gaining from the BharatNet project? Uh, so just to be clear, the new phase three BharatNet is is the almost one la 1.4 lakh crore project. 
uh, that is a clear priority of of the government to to take that forward and and the conversations and the discussions are progressing uh, even since we last spoke so there's a there's a real intent to go uh, get the project executed um, i think uh, the uh, the way the capex is structured is broadly 50% uh, fif- the investment is structured is broadly 50% capex and 50% opex uh, where the execution would happen over two and a half three years and maintenance would be for seven years so this presents a very exciting opportunity for stl across uh, you know from supply of fiber supply of cable supply of interconnect uh, as well as of course our services and maintenance uh, business uh, so this is something that we are very much uh, actively participating and as we shared earlier we are very mindful of uh, looking at this and the government uh, business so very mindful of the cash and exposure as well Uh, just one thing uh, are the bids submitted for the barnet net project and allocation is pending or uh, no. uh, even the allocation part is done what is what, no, what, no, what no. is the status on that no we are we are not at the bid stage yet we before that okay 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 Chala. thanks a lot thanks a lot but that's it from and wish you good luck for the, for the com- upcoming thank ones thank you thank you sohan uh, we'll now ask ravi khan to uh, ask the questions ravi khan please state your organization name thank you for the opportunity i mean individual, individual investor my question is sir uh, a couple of quarters back we we heard from you like uh, the chinese and the chinese china mobile tender order has been uh, released right so did we get any business from that particular uh, country sir i mean we acquired even a joint venture we had 25% stake right from the joint venture and did we get any business from that yeah thank you so uh, we are uh, we did acquire the balance 25% stake so it's a 100% percent ent- stl owned entity now in in, in china uh, but strategically just to be clear we've always set up and build that facility to not just meet china requirements but our global uh, requirements both whether it is for our own cable requirements or any other external cablers uh, so to that extent uh, that's that's how the factory uh, is is operating uh and uh, we continue to serve our our global requirements for fiber from that facility uh regarding specifically to china mobile uh, of course that tender has come through uh, the volumes continue to be in the market we do not currently serve uh, uh we do not supply from that fa- uh, facility into the china market uh, we do see more strategic reasons to supply to our our global cable operations or to external markets uh, other other cablers globally okay thank you just one more question sir uh, from past 6 months we have been hearing from north america like uh, there's a lot of inventory pending right so i mean even today we are also saying that it's it will take about 6 months so in the past 6 months isn't really any business isn't really any commissioning going on there i mean uh, by such slow progress can you provide some insight on that yeah sure so just to be clear there's still deployment going on uh, and so it's just a function of how, how quickly does the execution happen across you know the broader customer base to ensure that the the inventory comes off uh, essentially as i've shared earlier the inventory is in in three places it's inventory uh, with us as as a supplier it's inventory with the distributors and it's also inventory with the uh, end customers um, so it's a function of all that inventory cumulatively coming off and that's what we've been sharing will take some period of time uh, versus what we had expected in last quarter as well it has still taken more time part of that also is because the execution speed on the ground is actually not picking up with a, as much as we would have liked or hoped for in terms of physical deployment on the ground so hopefully as that also picks up over the next 6 months and 12 months we get more manpower into the ground to execute uh, as a market uh, hopefully that also leads to more execution uh, in terms of actual funding commitments uh, interest from our private equity or from telecom operators to deploy that we fundamentally see to continue and also from a mid to long term perspective we continue to be very bullish on the north america market okay sir just one one last question the uk service business sir i think even there also we didn't really see much movement i mean can you throw some light on that also yes so uh, absolutely so uh, as we shared last time that uh, currently uh, in in uh, for part of q1 mm-hmm. and then into q2 uh, the uk services uh, was uh, still looking to scale up but was operating at losses Uh, so to that extent as we shared we have uh, evaluated the business closely and uh, we are closely evaluating uh, strategic uh, uh, options to uh, to take the business forward there uh, we clearly see there is an operating model and a cost base 
that we're looking to reduce towards to make the business uh, uh, you know break even and profitable and parallelly we also evaluating other strategic options so we will come back to you on that shortly thank you sir uh thank you ravi we'll now move on to aditya raveri yeah thanks for the opportunity my question is regarding uh, the north america market so everyone is expecting that next year there will be growth right uh, so firstly i wanted to ask regarding what is our capacity utilization and the second part is if everyone is waiting to dump next year then the pricing also pressure can come here right so can you throw some light here on the pricing front and the capacity yeah. utilization yeah so uh, at least uh... on the north america part just to be clear i i think uh, it's not that the market uh, we expect will dump and price it to go down we have in fact seen even in this market uh, prices to actually be uh, quite healthy and that's just nature of of uh, that market specifically uh, where you typically have good tier one suppliers with you uh, you know through uh, market conditions who continue to supply uh, what we have seen is lead times have come down uh, from at its peak was probably north of 50 plus weeks have probably come down to somewhere around 8 to 10 weeks uh, currently uh, and to that extent wherever we need to supply uh, from our north america market we have started supplies from those operations that factory is still uh, scaling up uh, and overall at stl level we are uh, operating at close to 60% utilization uh, for first half of uh, of this fiscal year so next year uh, any additional capacity is commissioning or it is already commissioned with us so we are uh, as we said in the past our main investment is to uh, to look at our us facility so there probably be some in the second half of uh, of this fiscal year there will be some more capacity getting added as per our current plan for north america but beyond that we have no other capacity addition plans uh, and that's also where we have talked about our capex plans for the year coming down uh, from 350 crores to 250 crores uh, so we have pretty much uh, done with our capex investment Uh, apart from maybe some maintenance capex etc and uh, the the prime focus will be to look at various markets for our sales and to ensure we improve our uh, factory utilizations okay and the next question is regarding the demerger i had one question right how will be the debt restructure there do you can you throw some light here so uh, i think uh, from a debt restructuring for a gsp business uh, i think it's a it's a function when we are going to uh, get the necessary approval uh, from nclt on the on the date when we get the approval from nclt whatever is a uh, very specific debt attributable to the gsp business which will get transferred when we looked at a current debt which is attributable to the stl uh, stl uh, service business is about uh 550 to 600 crores okay but i think the working capital is high there only right so so it comes yeah. 550 only to the services business rest all debt is on the optical business that's correct but uh, the the way it is required uh, from the income tax perspective the the debt has to be very specifically attached to that particular business when you borrow the funds uh, for the purpose for which you borrow the funds is important uh so the lines that we have very specifically for years the business which has been utilized is about 550 to 600 crores as on date okay um, on the this product business how much uh, working capital or debt would be required so the working capital cycle for uh, onb business is in the range of 60 to 75 days uh so the balance debt will be will be will be with uh, uh, with uh, onb business correct that would also at stl level which will be attributable to uh, uh, attributable to onb business as well as to the digital business right now okay. okay my last question is on the digital i see there is a quite jump up in our revenue right and i know that you are taking a consultancy model here you are hiring the consult consultants here but uh, if you think of a long long term strategy if you want to scale this business big do you think this is the right strategy to go forward and can you talk about the projects here what kind of projects we are doing Does that we are getting the revenue like one forty crores within a span of one year? Yeah, so uh, I, I think uh, I would say at a high level it's still very early stages um, in this business. Uh, what we what we focused on, what we shared earlier as well, is we want to focus on few segments. Uh, make sure that we have strong customer relationships in those segments, and we create value uh, 
uh, for those customers. That's that's really been the focus. And really, from a financial perspective, I think we've got fairly healthy order book, close to 750 crores. Uh, we have very, very strong uh, team in place and leadership in place. And the very specific near-term target for the business uh, is to look at uh, EBITDA uh, break-even by Q4. Um, we continue to evaluate how we want to take this business forward, how we want to scale it up, uh, what are the areas we want to focus on, what are the capabilities we want to build. Uh, but really, from a uh, from a management focus, uh, that is the immediate priority in terms of break even, uh, and and from there, then we would provide more updates as as we get clarity on the plan ahead. But uh, just, to, just to clarify, yeah. the the consultant means these are our own employees having the the capabilities of yeah. delivering the uh, uh, the the requirement of the customers. So they are not third party consultants; they are our own people. Okay. So how many people are there here? So, so if you go to the slide number 18 of the presentation, we have 900 plus consultants. So then so why are we calling we, as consultants? I it's our internal that. terminology. So that's why okay. we call them as a consultant. But these are our own employees because they, they provide a consulting to the to the customer. That's why, uh, you know, we call them internally as a consultant. But what kind of work can you, Ankit, can you throw some light like it is a typical IT services work or it is code yes, to yes, some? Yes, yes, yes. It is it is IT services uh, business. Uh, just to be to be very clear, it's, it's very focused. Uh, we have some uh, tier one customers uh, on board, uh, and as we continue to scale up with these customers, uh, that's where we see, particularly by Q4, we have uh, you know we see a path where we can get this to break you. So basically, this is like banking, retail, like this. Only the work so, we are doing here. Yeah, so you go in slide number 18, the service offering we have, the second bullet is on service offering, where we have very clearly mentioned that we provide on enterprise SaaS services, yep. product engineering, cloud and cyber security services, data analytics, and uh, AI services. So these are the specific services uh, that we provide to some of our customers. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Aditya. We will now move on to Saket Kapoor. Saket, please state your organization name as well. Yeah, Namaskar Ankit ji, and Tushar ji. Namaskar. I'm Saket, yeah, Saket Kapoor from Kapoor Company. Sir, uh, you did mention that we are lo loading our uh, capex uh, target to, uh, I think, so 250 crore from 350-400. So, uh, uh, if you could elaborate more, where are where is this uh, reduction going to happen and? Uh, what was the earlier thought out plan and why are, why is this reduction now? And the capital work in progress is, I think, so at 180 crore. So uh, that has increased uh, year on year. So uh, if you could explain these two uh, numbers. So uh, uh, I take your first question uh, is with respect to our cap CapEx program. Uh, so when we had yearly, when we started, uh, you know, the financial year, uh, we looked at what was the core CapEx program which was acquired. It, it had, you know, the U.S. specific phase two CapEx plan, correct? Now looking at the current, uh, you know, the, the demand in U.S., we will have to defer some of those things till the time the, the demand picks up and we see that sustainable demand. And then we'll try to revive the second phase of uh, any kind of a, capex program that may we may have for us plan so that's we uh, i mean that's your first question uh, sir, you know sir, uh, just one second is it a capacity building or of operational efficiency building at the uh, at, for the us part which you are, we are differing right now the us part is a capacity building the phase 2 of the capacity building based on the demand okay. correct so yeah. at this point in time since uh, you know the demand is still to pick up i think we have curtailed this particular capex in order to manage the cash efficiently. Right, sir. And point two, sir, uh, the current capital work in progress, uh, I think so, is around 180 crore. So, uh, when is, we are going to capitalize this and where is this money deployed? So, this this is, these are the, uh, these are the CAPEX related to, large, large part of the CAPEX is related to US, uh, which will be capitalized, you know, once we are able to commission some of these particular lines. Correct. So, uh, one, as we commission some of these lines, uh, the, 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 you know, the capitalization will happen. Right, sir. Sir, when we look at your employee cost as a percentage of sales, uh, that has remained elevated uh, at, at the console level. 
so if uh, what's your comment on the same uh, is it because of uh, the ramp up exercise for the us facility or how should we take this number uh, of uh, this this run rate of 250 crore on a quarterly uh, basis uh, correct me there and also sir uh, ankit ji when you mentioned that we are looking at muted uh, numbers going ahead so uh, uh, on on an h1 basis uh, do we do we look at uh, uh, at the exit of h1 as what we can look for h2 as of now or or h2 will be uh, comparatively lower than what we have done for h1 so uh, uh, so <clears throat> with respect to your employee cost uh, i think uh, we need to understand that you know we are into three businesses three separate businesses the two businesses are you know the highly uh, you know the employee intensive or you know uh, uh, you know uh, people. people intensive uh, i would say that you know service business as well as a digital business uh, <clears throat> which is which requires uh, you know a kind of uh, you know headcount that is required to serve the customer Uh, uh with respect to that that's the that that's the reason that we are into a uh, high employee cost uh, as a uh, as a uh, as an organization uh, because we are into three dif- different businesses uh, the second is your second question is with respect to uh, i missed that particular question the revenue the revenue trajectory for h2 uh, as, yes h2 versus h1 uh, what we exited h1 at 2200 especially for the uh, i think so the 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 muted uh, the uh, the pessimism is towards the opti- optical network business our our core it is not i think so regarding the global services neither for the digital part there Absolutely. i think so aap log better time se dekh rahe hain but for the uh, our core business uh, it things look uh, on the lower side so how, what should be pensioning in uh, going ahead for h2 for the two segment so i think uh, uh, you know for this both the segments will continue to grow uh, the the you know continues to serve the customers based on the the auto execution plan that we have so it will sus- on a sustainable basis they will grow on uh, this two two businesses will grow on a quarter on quarter basis except for onb business so how how should we look at the onb business sir my, my question is onb is a uh, declining trend so this is this is done with or more decline is expected for h2 going ahead what should be pensioning in so to, i i mean see we have given this guidance is uh, with respect to the overall we yeah. see that this year we will be uh, we may have we may see the decline with respect to the previous previous year uh, uh, and the large part of the revenue comes from the onb business okay so no 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 percentage you can guide us where we can land no as i said i think we are watching the market closely and particularly mm-hmm. impact of north america so as we get better visibility i think it will be fair for us to comment at that time okay so two very small point for the disabled part sir from t5 project how much is the disabled pending and what kind of milestones uh, are we going to uh, complete so that these disabled gets get liquidated So our uh, working capital employed in this T fiber business is about 700 crores. Uh, uh, the the T fiber, as Ankit mentioned, is very complex project because it requires the entire state level, the network to be built up. So each panchayat, uh, then the district, uh, then the uh, then the village, then the city, and then the entire state needs to be built up to ensure that you know we have we have built up the entire network at the state level. so which is a little bit of complex project because each and every uh, every uh, uh, the segment of the network should work e- efficiently to get the necessary approvals from the from the uh, from the customer uh, which we call it is uh, atc the acceptance test certificate i think that's the way we have been working on you know, to ensure that we complete uh, progressively on on each and every segment uh, so that we move ahead on this particular project faster thank you saket um yeah with this we come to the end of the question answer session and now i hand it over back to ankit for closing remarks like to thank everyone for attending this call and showing interest in our company 
Despite a challenging market environment, we've managed to maintain EBITDA margins at consistent levels. At H1 FY24, we have reduced our debt levels by 111 crores and the CapEx cycle has been completed with operationalization of the US facility. We're thus well positioned to execute on our growth strategy of being world top three, be able to deliver more robust results when the demand, particularly in North America, market recovers. I hope you were able to address and clarify all your queries and comments. For further questions and discussions, feel, feel free to contact our investor relations team, which includes myself and Tushar. We really look forward to continuing the conversation with you in the near future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. For this, we end the call.